Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of, of Ottawa, Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, also with Carleton University, Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. I'm talking about the natural disaster. Um, do we have natural disasters anymore, first of all? I mean, we've changed the chemistry of the atmosphere and oceans. We've, we're getting extreme weather events galore because of our greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so anyway, the way we define um, natural disasters, um, there's some event like torrential rainfall over a long period of time leading to flooding. And then there's also the human, humans are harmed somehow by this disaster. Otherwise, it wouldn't be called a, a disaster. Um, and there's always a human interaction during, especially during a flood, which can be a long duration um, river rise. Um, and, and there's different ways in which human dam operators, hydroelectric uh, power stations, uh, reservoir operators levels, there's ways in which people can affect the result. So I'm looking at the human um, interaction with, with those events. So I've generated, I've generated a Google Earth um, map showing the outline here. So, so here we have Ottawa and the Britannia Bay gauge. We have different dams and generating stations in here. I've outlined an area here in red where the river is very low and I talked about some, I showed some of the images in the previous video. Um, this is uh, Lake Temiskaming, a big reservoir up here. And I'm only looking at things that are affecting the water level at Britannia Bay. Okay, there's a lot of other stuff coming on down here, but that's downriver to Britannia Bay where we have that gauge. So let's focus in on some of the areas here. So, so this is where the gauge data is. And just to remind you of the gauge data, this is the, this is the data here. Okay, this is the gauge data here, um, showing a very large spike on Saturday, May 6th, where the water level rose. Basically, one centimeter every five minutes for 100 minutes, and then one centimeter every 12 minutes for another 60 minutes. A crazy fast rise. If the gauge is accurate, then this is a human-caused rise, is what my argument is. Okay, so at this particular station here, and I'll go back to, um, I'll go, go to here, just so that's after our map, we can look at that. So here's Ottawa here, here's Britannia Bay, where, where the uh, gauge is that I just showed you. And then we've got the river here. Um, I'm, there's, a, there's a generating station here. Okay, there's a generating station here. Um, and um, this is a Fitzroy Harbor. And if we go up the river more, there's a generating station, another one here. And we can go all the way up here. And this is day Joshims. This is that, uh, that's this guy here that I talked about. Okay, with uh, that's this one here, this reservoir here. So it's got some freeboard. There was room to hold some water, but it's dumping, it's discharging large amounts of water here, um, bracketing the day when we had that spike. There's also um, Tamiskaming is the next largest one. So going back to um, our Google Earth map, here we have Dejo Shim, and then here we have uh, Tamiskaming, the city, and Lake Tamiskaming here. Okay, and there's uh, hydro dams here, and, there's, and, and, and this is Mattawa, okay? And this is that place clock. So in those images that I showed, so apparently, the water level was reported from Ralphton to Mattawa. The water level um, was very, very low on the, exceptionally low on the Ottawa River. In fact, the lowest people had ever seen it. And the reason being is, that was given is, that you would flood out, you know, if you, there's a choke point here. And the reason is that if you filled this river here, you would have the water backing up here 
And you can tell um, on Google Earth, you can see the elevation, 154 meters here, going all the way into Matawa, 152 me meters. So it's about the same elevation. It's got to be a bit higher here than here. You know, the river is running this way. But basically, if you start the water backing up here, you know, apparently it goes from a very deep uh, river in places to very shallow, it's a choke point, the water would start backing up and you'd flood out Matawa. And that's the reason given by the hydrologists that were interviewed that say this whole region, which I've highlighted in red, is where the record low levels are. And there's people that have been taking pictures. Um, this is Stone Cliff here. Um, and Stone Cliff is where we had very, very low water levels and rocks exposed. Okay, um, so the question is, you know, where is the, why, how can there be a large flow rate from this particular, um, from, from this particular dam? So I can focus in on this and there's a dam hydro and hydro station here and there's another one here letting the water out here. Um, you can see the drop here. This is 137 meters over here, 120 meters. So it's a 17 meter drop roughly. Um, okay, so, so this reservoir has enough water to maintain the high flow rate, even though, you know, there's record low levels up further, further back. Okay, so that's the, um, so this reservoir is being drawn down um, and that burst of water is going uh, up here. Now also, there's a large flow as we go up here from Tamiskaming. Okay, there's large, large flow rates um, of water going in here. So even though the river is low, very, very low, there's enough large flow rates here um, and it's going through in, in, in here and, and because the flow rate is large over here and is much larger over here than here, then the, the, the levels can be maintained at low um, amount here. So that's basically um, what's going on there. Okay, so, um, you know, and you can identify on Google Earth whether there's, um, whether there's uh, power stations that are run of the river power stations that are just uh, no dam, no water storage, water's just flowing through the power station. Um, and you can identify, you know, the, the drop at dam. So the key thing is, you know, where did that water spike come? Now it's raining in the entire basin heavily, but the rain, you know, goes on and it has to drain down into the rivers and then flow along. It takes time to drain down. That would spread out, that would um, argue against a very sharp spike. It would take time and that would spread out. And also, you know, we saw the curve was flat and then went up. And I would expect, you know, if it was from the rain, the curve would be going up over time because there was heavy rain for that whole period of time. So just reiterating, Okay, there was heavy rain, you know, in, all, in this period here, and yet there was no change in the level, and then it was a very rapid change. Okay, so let's have a, let's talk a little bit more about the watershed. I mean, this is a massive watershed. Um, there's the um, ma massive watershed. There's lots of dams on the river. There's lots of hydro stations. You know, it straddles Quebec and Ontario. So we've got the Quebec provincial government. We've got Ontario provincial government. We've got the federal government. We've got the um, municipal governments of, city, of, of cities. Um, we have Quebec Hydro. We have Ontario Hydro with their dams and generating stations and for both of those um, corporations, right? So it's a big, Basically, you know, it's a logistical, it, it's very, um, you know, you have to have people all talking to each other and stuff. So the question is, you know, if that gauge was working properly at Britannia, if that spike occurred, you know, was it necessary to have that spike? I mean, that spike basically finished off a lot of people, you know, living along the river. They'd sandbagged and stuff, and then the water came up so fast 
you know, it just went out, it, it overtopped the sandbags. There was no time to, um, to, to make them higher. You know, it just swamped out people. Um, this is a water, this is the river profile, um, if you like. So, you know, these are areas, here's Ottawa Gatineau here. Um, there's different uh, waterfalls, Chaudière Falls, different rapids. Constant Bay had severe flooding. Um, there's Arnfryer, so we had severe flooding in, in Fitzroy Harbor. We had severe flooding, you know, in Ottawa Gatineau, all, all the way along the, the watershed. Um, and you can see kind of the elevation, how it's rising, and, there's, and, and it's showing you where some of the dams are. Okay. Um, so the, the, um, there's a lot of human intervention going on in controlling water levels in all of the various dams and, and so on. Um, there's also, um, you know, sort of protocols because of the nature of the Ottawa River having the two, the dual peaks, you know, and the northern peak being larger, you know, sometimes in a normal year, the reservoirs would be kept lower to absorb that water from the peak. So, so the water rise in Ottawa was very, very rapid. That water had to come from somewhere. It looks like it came from some of the northern reservoirs, which were collecting the rainwater, but they, you know, they let the, the water came out in very rapidly. Um, and then the northern, the, the second um, pulse, it's apparently um, no longer, you know, is incorporated in part of this, this flooding event. Normally it would happen about uh, three, uh, you know, normally it would happen, uh, it would still be, um, uh, it, it still would, it wouldn't have happened yet normally. Okay, so let's look at, now we have these 100 year flood maps. So this is the one in 100 years. So um, if this is the one in 100 year flood map, um, then, you know, you can see basically this is a region around, fit, this is Fitzroy Harbor down here. And this is the flood map. So how good are these maps? Okay, so this is, uh, there's a recent document um, put out in 2014 and it identifies this location here and you can uh, go and you can select an individual region. So let's say we wanted to select one of these regions. Then I can click back here, see if this is gonna work for me. Doesn't seem to want to cooperate. Okay, so you can go and you can select. It's not cooperating with me. Um, you can go and you can select a very detailed flood map. You know, this type of scale, I think it's a one in 2000 or something scale. And you can see where the one in a hundred year flood map is current to 2014. So these are digital elevation maps that have been updated, at least for this region. I haven't found them for, you know, for, for outside and towards Ottawa more. Um, and, you know, the, the key thing, you know, one in a hundred year flood, it means there's a 1% chance of occurring in any given year. You know, if you, and, and also I, I argue that these statistics, you know, what used to be in a stable climate, a one in a hundred year flood could easily be uh, something like a one in a 10 year, one in a 20 year flood, um, as was pointed out by Justin Trudeau recently. And as I pointed out prior to that in, in a number of different interviews with CBC, et cetera. So this is Gatineau, this is showing the floodplain, um, you know, the one in a hundred year flood, and there's more information on floods. Um, this is a document that I would highly recommend, the Mississippi Valley Conservation Authority, to read about the flood plain, plain mapping study. And, you know, here's a couple key points here. Okay, so there's the map that I showed you, similar map with the different regions. You can go and select data on each of the different regions. This is a key point. Okay, within the study area, Ottawa River Britannia is the only active station recording discharge. Okay, they were doing it at Chats Falls, but then they stopped doing that. Um, the, you know, they stopped in 1994 and then Auto Ontario Power Generation did it from 94 to 2012, but there's nothing afterwards. So it's really absurd. You know, we can have a multi-billion dollar flood event damaging places and there's one gauge to record 
the water parameters 